Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. As you know, I have a passion for bringing science to the real world. I do it via books, I do it by training and consulting, and I do it by my Practical Science series, where I bring science alive with a lot of apps. If I go to Practical Science and I go to Practical Adhesion, note that I'm running this on my local host rather than running it live on the website, just because it makes recording easier. So this would say www.stephenabbott.co.uk Practical Adhesion. So in Practical Adhesion, I have lots of apps. For example, the peel of a pressure sensitive adhesive relies on a number of complicated formulae. And those formulae are brought to life with the app. I can change things about the adhesive and the carrier and the peel angle. When I change things, the results of those changes appear live in the graph and I can get a good understanding of a complicated bit of science via the apps. I have written about 200 apps and I will carry on writing apps, but I can't write everything. Science is too large. So what I want is for you to be able to write apps. Writing an app like this is in one way hard and in another way quite easy. The easy bit is writing the scientific code. Assuming you have some coding skills in C or Fortran or JavaScript, writing the code for an app is quite straightforward. The difficult part is making it into an app, having all these sliders slide within their ranges, having the graphs looking nice, and especially if this runs on a mobile phone, when you shrink it down, it automatically rescales to look good on a phone. That aspect of app writing is indeed very hard. Although you might have the scientific coding skills, you still have the excuse that you can't write the app infrastructure. Well, I've now removed that excuse because I've written AppWriter and it allows you to create all the app infrastructure really without any effort. I've got an app called Test App and here it is blank. And if I actually show you that blank app, that's all it is. It has a title and that's about it. So I want this app to do something. I want it to be able to graph. So I say I want a graph. I use P for various reasons. ID equals my graph. And I want a text box output and its ID, the name that will be used in the code is T box. And I can write a few more things. I actually have all the codes for this. So slider is S. And you can have from and to, text boxes T. I can have check boxes, radio boxes, options, canvas, and buttons. To make it quicker to fill these codes with something useful, I've pre created them. I click this button, and now I've put these codes in there. So I have two graphs, I have two sliders. This slider, for example, goes from 0.001 to 1. I've got a text box, and I have a checkbox which is pre-checked. And that's it. I've now defined my app. How do I then get the JavaScript and the HTML to appear in my test app? Well, I have a text editor. I click on this JavaScript. I do Control A, Control C. Then I go to my text editor. I go to the JavaScript. There's the blank JavaScript. Delete all that do control V and there is my new JavaScript. Similarly, I go to the HTML, control all, control C, control A, control V. There's the new HTML. I save that. I go back to test app. I hit F5 to refresh the page and there is the app. The two graphs, the two sliders and the text box and the check box, which is checked. This slider, which goes from 0.01 to 1, I've actually made logarithmic. So it has fine resolution at the start and then gradually gets coarser. Because sometimes we need very large ranges. This one is just from 1 to 100 in normal steps. Ah, you say, I need a button in the app. No problem. We go back to the app writer and we say, I want a button. Its ID equals my button. And the caption is press me. There we go. I hit return. 
Now that's all added to the code. Go to the JavaScript, Control C, Control A, Control V. There's the new JavaScript. Save it. Control A, Control C, Control A, Control V. There's the new HTML. I now refresh the page, and there is my button. When I click on it, nothing happens because, of course, we haven't added any scientific code, but actually the handler for doing something when press me is already in the JavaScript. So I've made things very easy for you. This app looks rather like other Stephen Abbott apps. You might not like how it looks at all. You want something which integrates into your own site. Well, two things. First of all, I have no interest in you replicating Stephen Abbott apps. I'm only interested in you being able to make good apps. It's very easy to change the look and feel using CSS, the style code used in web pages. Another important thing, yes, I'm running this on my local host. When you are running it, you'll be running this app writer on my website, but nothing you do in app writer goes to me. The beauty of HTML JavaScript is that it is running on your own laptop. So any secret app which you want for your corporation or your university, there's nothing revealed to me. I have more resources. There's the guide to the code. I've got a user's guide which explains much more about it. But really importantly, I have some code snippets. So many of the things you want to do, like do basic calculations, handle a checkbox, plotting a graph, fitting data to a polynomial, or outputting data, I have code snippets. So many of the things which are needed, like graphing, like handling data, I've already made it easy for you to bring you up to speed on the JavaScript way of doing things. So there we have it. I bring you AppWriter, and if you thought you had an excuse for not writing apps, then I'm happy to say I've removed that excuse. Good luck. I look forward to seeing some of them.